This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals like Stalking Hitler's Generals, when Allied commandos launched daring wartime missions to kill or capture German generals, and Secret Societies, organizations that play a far larger role in our everyday lives than most of us realize from the Illuminati to Freemasons and Skull and Bones. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our fans, use the promo code Mark Felton and you will save 25% off, which comes to only fourteen ninety nine a year. That's just $1.25 per month. For the very best in history programming, choose Curiosity Stream. At nine minutes past eleven on the night of the 10th of May 1941, locals at Floors Farm, south of Glasgow in Scotland, were alerted by the sound of an almighty crash. Local ploughman David McLean quickly discovered a German pilot in one of his fields, struggling to release himself from his parachute harness. The German, who spoke excellent English, identified himself as Hauptmann or Captain Alfred Horn of the Luftwaffe. He said he had an important message for local aristocrat the Duke of Hamilton, whose stately home, Dungaval House, lay twelve miles to the west. Maclean took Horn to his cottage and contacted the local home guard, who took the German away. Early the next day, Horn gave up the pretense and revealed who he really was. Deputy Führer Rudolf Hess. He claimed that he was on a quote unquote mission of humanity and that Hitler wanted to stop fighting the British. Explaining this to Hamilton, then serving as an RAF wing commander at Turnhaus near Edinburgh. And so began one of the most discussed and written about episodes of World War II. Why had Hess flown alone all the way from Germany? Had Hitler sanctioned his peace mission or had Hess gone mad? Was the man in British custody even Hess, or a double, sent to Britain as part of some convoluted intelligence plot? Was the real Hess dead? And so on. This video is not going to address any of these intriguing questions, but rather I want to focus on a part of the story that's always ignored, the fate of Hess's plane, and also reveal a theft of Hess artefacts that means someone today is sitting on a small fortune gained through illicit means, and is hoarding important historical artefacts. The established story is that Hess took off from a base at Augsburg, where Messerschmitt test flew aircraft, and flew some 1,300 miles unaided all the way to Scotland, intending to land at the Duke of Hamilton's home, Dungaval House, which had a small airfield on the grounds. For some reason, Hess managed to get within 12 miles of Dungaval, but decided to bail out, making his first parachute jump. The plane, a twin-engined Messerschmitt BF-110, crashed into a nearby field. Hess was an experienced pilot, having been a combat aviator during World War I. He had also trained extensively on the BF-110. Whilst Hess began the process of interrogation and imprisonment by the British that would eventually lead to the Nuremberg trials and a life sentence at Berlin's Spandau prison, Hess's plane also began its own journey and ultimately would outlast its final pilot to still exist today. After being examined in situ by the Royal Air Force and picked over by souvenir hunters, the BF-110 wreckage was gathered up by No. 63 Maintenance Unit between the 11th and the 16th of May 1941 and taken to their depot at Carluke in Scotland. Already it was perceived that the wreckage was of value to the British war effort. The plane that carried Hitler's deputy to the UK would be a powerful propaganda tool. 50 maintenance unit based at Cowley in Oxford was ordered under great secrecy to send vehicles and staff to Scotland, retrieve the wreckage and drive it down to Oxford. Shortly after arrival at Cowley, 50 maintenance unit's commanding officer received a phone call from his superior, ordering him to put the wreckage on public display outside St Giles in Oxford, with boards announcing whose plane it was. This order caused great consternation in high places, but the order originated from the highest authority. After being displayed in Oxford for one day, 
The National Savings Committee announced in the press that the wreckage was to be publicly displayed at the Tower of London, ironically, where Hess had been briefly imprisoned himself. The idea was to help raise funds for War Weapons Week, but according to some sources, this plan was scuppered due to a US aero engineer named Donald Dunning having examined the wreck and noted several parts as being US marked, particularly the BF-110's tyres and a fuel tank marked 100 octane, a US designation. Of course, the story may be nonsense, but perhaps it explains why displaying Hess's 110 at the Tower of London was eventually abandoned. Hess's plane subsequently disappeared from public display. The wreckage was preserved in an RAF hangar for some decades until it was placed on public display at the Imperial War Museum, Duxford. One of the two Daimler-Benz engines was retained by the RAF Museum at Hendon, London and is now on loan to the Museum of Flight in East Fortune, Scotland. Today, one engine and the rear fuselage of Hess's plane is on display at Duxford. Many other parts, some quite large, have turned up at auction over the decades, having been taken by souvenir hunters at the time. Interestingly, there are some other items associated with the crash that are incredibly valuable but are now missing. In 1946, Hess was sentenced to life imprisonment at the Nuremberg trial. He served out that sentence at Spandau Prison in West Berlin until his death there in August 1987 at the age of 93 the only remaining prisoner in a prison built for 700 inmates and guarded at great cost by rotating details of troops from the original Allied powers, Great Britain, the United States, France and the Soviet Union. When Hess was captured in 1941, he had been dressed in Luftwaffe uniform and this uniform was stored at Spandau. Here we see a photograph of a very elderly Hess examining his old uniform and flight equipment at Spandau. In 1986, the year before Hess died, someone stole Hess's Luftwaffe tunic, cap, flying helmet, shoes and other personal items, including Hess's signet ring from the prison storage area. In 1989, former British soldier Stephen Timpson, who had been a guard at Spandau, was found guilty of stealing some of the property and attempting to ransom it back to Hess's son. He received a two-year suspended prison sentence. Hess's leather flying helmet that he was wearing when he landed in Scotland remains unaccounted for today, and possibly his Luftwaffe tunic as well. The last British governor of Spandau, Tony Letizier, now a historian, said that he burned all of Hesse's remaining personal items after his death in 1987. Someone is today sitting on a small fortune, as Hesse's Luftwaffe uniform would fetch a high figure if it ever came up for auction. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.